going to talk about what makes Quebec's, well, what is Quebec's uh, situation in terms of proportional representation right now and the attitude and the sort of uh, demographics of Quebec. Um, so very, I looked when I first heard about this at the MDN site because uh, the former president of the Mouvement de Marcy Nouvelle has done a lot of research into the history of proportional representation in Quebec. So the next few slides you're going to see are lifted from her, her, uh, her research. Okay. So here we go. Uh, in 19, 1849, Louis Joseph Papineau promoted a proportional representation in the United uh, Canada Parliament, although at that time the term was used in the sense of representation according to population. And as I'm assuming from the, what we've heard today, it's now according to population, but also according with a, a sort of a modification so that you have a nod to the regional. Uh, vote as well, to have representative that's a local representative as well. Uh, 1867, Canada's first general election in which a conservative government was elected with 53.5% of votes and yet dominated the National Assembly with 79.7% of the seats. And in 1902, an article in Le Pionnier newspaper criticized the first past the post system as unjust. In 1918, women who are British subjects, 21 years of age, and otherwise meet the qualifications entitling a man to vote, are entitled to vote in a Dom Dominion of Canada election. And you'll notice there's a real time lag there, but 30-odd uh, years later, an act in Quebec gives women the right to vote and to run as candidates, finally. In 1962, uh, the RIN, a sovereignist party that was a precursor of the PQ, became the first party to add electoral reform to its platform. And in 1979, Robert Burns, Minister of State for Electoral and Parliamentary Reform, submits an electoral reform bill in the National Set Assembly, but it is not adopted. In 1981 to 1984, the PICU government under René Lévesque introduces a series of ER studies and reports. An ER bill is adopted in 1984, and the caucus rejects it. I think somebody made reference to that earlier today when they were speaking. So, that it's not the first time that a party has sort of uh, uh, advocated for PR and then once they become pa the party in power, backs off. So uh, in 1985, once in power, Robert Barassa withdraws his support of electoral reform. The new government leaves the project in limbo. 1996, the ADQ, PQ, and the Marxist-Leninist party submit memorandums on ER. There's a general buzz of interest and that continued for the subsequent years. There was quite a dense a lot of activity, but I've just put the highlights here. 1998, uh, the Mouvement pour une Démocratie Nouvelle is created in response to an election that brought the PQ to power despite a smaller percentage of the vote than the Liberals. And in 2006, Jacques Dupuis, Minister for the, Re uh, for the Reform of Dem Democratic Institutions, tables a pre preliminary plan for a regional mixed member proportional system. So the idea of our esteemed uh, uh, representative of the Liberal Party, uh, Sheila, Sheila Duc, uh, Gerbe, saying that we need a, a commission and a study. Sounds like been there, done that many times in Quebec, anyway. Um, 2012, MDN gets a new president, Jean Sebastien de Duchesne. He's here in the room. Bye. And in 2013, the Fair Vote Canada Montreal chapter was revived after a few, few years of. Um, sort of languishing in, in ignominy uh, by student Sam Hirsch, and he's in another workshop, but he's here as well, uh, who together with me, uh, we held our first meeting in 2014. <laughs> so Quebec demographics. Uh, Quebec is Canada's swing riding. We really are uh, the sort of proverbial swing riding in Canada. Anything goes, you don't know what to expect, and it can, anything can happen in Quebec, which just makes it really interesting during a campaign. Uh, Quebecers tend to vote as a bloc and to swing en masse from one party to another. For example, in 2011, the NDP crushed the bloc Québécois in 158 of Quebec's 75 seats. Uh, in 2014, a similar phenomenon occurred in the provincial elections, and we all know what happened. Spring election, the PQ was ousted after just 18 months in power. And that's a, an editorial cartoon from the Gazette newspaper in Montreal. <laughs> now, some other, some other demographics that are kind of interesting that make Quebec special. Uh, Quebec is a left of center province compared to all the other provinces in Canada. Even the right wing parties in Quebec are a little more 
left of center then, and Montreal is left of center of Quebec. So in Quebec, uh, the joke is that we're the city of uh, Ville des Manifs, we're the city of protests. Just about on any day on my Facebook page, I get invites to one or more protests happening or one or more demonstrations or rallies, whatever you want to call them, happening in some place in the city. Um, we have a very, and this is something we have in common with some other provinces, I, I've been told, is that the vote in the city is very different. In the city, Montreal is very diverse. Uh, it's, it's a very, how can I say, it's a, the city is very different from the, other, the rest of the province in terms of its mentality and its attitude and its politics. So it's always uh, a little bit special in terms of what will happen in a provincial election because the parties that want to can just play to the outlying areas and uh, Montreal it doesn't have enough political clout to really carry the vote, but on the other hand they can shake things up a little bit. Uh, also, youth participation in Quebec is up as a result, I think, of the student protests in the spring of 2013. Uh, that's not, Sam, is, Sam is special anyway. Sam started up the party again, even though he wasn't part of the student protests. He's too young for that. But uh, it's still wonderful that we, when we have our, our meetings, it's a large contingent of students. Like, I'm the oldest person in the room for all those meetings. Uh, Quebecers value social justice, and they probably more than anywhere else. This is a poster from uh, Quebec Solidaire, which is one of the provincial parties in the last election. And the, the tagline is, uh, for the love of a fair Quebec. So we really love fairness as well. And we've got the famous pie, you know. There was a, anyway, oh, I digress. But we have our share of cynics. Uh, what's democracy? Democracy is freedom to elect our own dictators. You know, we have our, People that say, well, they're, they're all corrupt and, uh, you know, politicians. Uh, I ran in, in one of the municipal elections, and I don't know how many times I heard uh, people, when I was going door to door, say to me, oh, you're all, you're all cheaters, you're all, you're all corrupt. Anyway, whatever I do, you'll, you know, it won't matter, or whatever I vote. So I, I felt very hurt. <laughs> so I think, uh, but I think anywhere you have your share of cynicism, and I think that first past the post just feeds into that cynicism, too, because we don't have a, a fair system. Uh, so PR goals in Quebec, we've sort of got our own little set of goals. Uh, we follow uh, the Fair Vote Canada's guidelines to focus on the Canadian federal elections in 2015. Uh, locally, our goal is to create uh, alliances with other PR groups, such as MDN, and to build our membership and awareness so that the issue of electoral reform and, and PR is front and centre. So we hope to do more sort of networking and alliance building and synergistic uh, collegial working with the with the other groups that are caring about this issue in order to really help everybody because we all have the same demographic that we're targeting which is the, the, the Quebec people. Um, oh, I just was talking but I have a much better uh, idea of MAP after listening to everybody this morning so I'm not going to bore you with what I wrote and it would work better as a graphic. So I'm going to go on to Quebec ER movers and shakers. This is by no means a comp comprehensive list, this is just uh, two or three people that I know. But one of them is uh, Stéphane Brouillon. Long before it became kind of trendy to talk about electoral reform, he was talking about it, and he came to Council of Canadian meetings, I remember, and presented us a, a very complex presentation, but because he's very mathematical, about what ER was. He's a really sincere and dedicated uh, PR supporter. Paul Cleish is a prolific uh, writer and uh, author of a few books on proportional representation and he very regularly writes little sort of uh, op-eds and sends them to his uh, email list. Uh, th this is MDN, Mouvement Democratie Nouvelle People. This is uh, Paul-André Martineau, who was the founder of the MDN and president until 1993. Uh, Mercedes Robert, uh, I think you all know. Uh, was president until uh, 2013, and Jean-Sébastien Dufresne is the current president, he's right here in the room. <laughs> uh, boring, oh, oh, well, I, I want to see if I can make the video play. Uh, does that, has everybody seen the Rose Nanan video? No, it's a video, uh, are, are you all, do uh, you understand French? Okay, because it can sort of, well, if there's no, don't be shy, because I can sort of explain in advance of what's going to happen so you can watch it. 
Would you like me to do that? Yes. Okay. It's basically a, a humorous video which shows people around the, an, accounting, uh, an accounting firm who've decided to change their logo and they're trying to decide on a color. You can see the analogy. And as they go around the table, you know, one person is saying blue, one person is saying uh, light blue, I think they're representing, think of the political parties when you hear the colors and you'll have a good idea of the Quebec landscape. But blue, light blue, red, uh, somebody else wants orange, it's a woman of course, and somebody else wants, uh, and they come to the end, and one of the sort of uh, Lala looking woman says, pale pink. And then, the, who's obviously a student stagiaire, pipes up and says, yeah, I like pale pink, let's, let's go for pale pink. So the owner of the firm says, well, that's the way democracy works in Canada, so our logo is going to be pale pink. And everybody looks a little bit disappointed. So I'll see if I can make it. Um, oh my goodness, okay. No, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, go back. Click video. Oh, sorry. <laughs> bon, maintenant qu'on sait des... Oops, there we go. That doesn't want to do full screen, but... Bon, maintenant qu'on sait décidé sur la forme de notre nouveau logo, on va passer au vote sur sa couleur. Chacun son tour. On va utiliser les mêmes règles qu'aux élections. Frédéric? Orange. Bleu pâle. Bleu foncé. Notice how they like each other. <laughs> Blue azure. Rose Nanan. Chantal. Ben, ouais. Rose Nanan. Don't bon. want to lower the rate to 16. Bon, ben, la démocratie a parlé. Hein? Ce sera Rose Nanan. <laughs> Si toi aussi tu trouves ça absurde et pas très représentatif que seulement deux personnes puissent remporter un vote à 7, dis-toi bien que c'est qu'une partie du problème du mode de scrutin actuel. Les solutions, il y en a plein. Il faudra juste que les partis s'activent. Et pour qu'ils s'activent, il faut qu'on en parle. Et pour qu'on en parle, il faut que tu aimes et partages cette vidéo à tes amis. So that actually circulated quite a bit. And it's a little bit like first past the pizza. It's a very simple way of showing how our system is broken and how ridiculous it is. And there's another one that somebody made uh, anonymously that I can show you, but it's kind of a, a, it's obviously a student effort, but it's a very cute little short video. Do we have time for that or? Also in French. Do we have time? Do I have time for that? Please. Okay. <laughs> vote against ideas more than for them. You feel like your vote doesn't count. 58% of the people didn't vote for the person that won. Time to reform. 85,000 Quebecers think yes, like other countries. MMP. It's possible. It starts with you. So that's it for Quebec. <laughs>